everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Night. Uh, with me today, I've got Jenny, and we're going to be talking about her new book, Organic Social Media, How to Build Flourishing Online Communities. And, and as I've got a copy, I've read it, Jenny, and I really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you so it's much. A, it's a lovely book. And, and, and the thing is, is when I interview people, you see, because you've used a lot of your experience, I think I really know you. But yeah. of course, you don't know me. So, but... We've we've spoken of it before, so not, it's not that I don't know you at all. Yeah. So so um, so, where can people get a copy? Um, so at wherever books are sold, Amazon, Amazon, CoganPage.com. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Excellent. So um, so Jenny, um, fabulous book. Thank um, you. What was the what was the catalyst for you about wanting to actually write this? Because you share so much experience. You've been on a, um, how long have you been on, on I, I X, how, you've been on what? You've been on X for a few years. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, a few decades, if you look at uh, and, this point. And, and the thing is, is that like, like lots of us, you did things, made mistakes, and you did things, and they worked. Exactly. And you share that all in the book. I do, I do. I, you know, I was hearing a lot of people, you know, sort of say organic social media is dead and everything needs to be paid. And um, there, there are a lot of books in the market, particularly that talk about um, social media marketing with paid marketing. Um, and I just thought there was a need for um, a book about just organic social media, because I always like to say that organic social media is not dead it's it's just difficult <laughs> and it, it takes a long time and so i so i guess I, at, so you just so you work at mit and the best place to get you isn't it or is on your linkedin profile yes the, and LinkedIn, you run the social media for mit i do i do um i um uh, i'm posting i'm hitting send on the mit channels daily still um but yeah i just i just felt like there maybe was um a need for this topic in in the space, and I guess I was happy to <laughs> fill that need. I think that I think that social media for me has changed over the. I've been on Twitter now for um, fifteen years, um, and and I think that we went through this process of of where where organic worked, and then paid seemed to be taking over. But if you do organic right. And, and certainly I would recommend people coming and looking both both your personal feeds and the, the MIT feed. This is where you see best practice taking place in social media. Yeah, I do feel that when you do organic well, you really tap into your your fandom your audience and that gives you an idea of what type of um, of content really resonates with your audience and when you marry that with um you know paid efforts i think that's when you know you can really amplify what you're doing instead of just throwing money at it you can really make it um very thoughtful and deliberate and 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 amplify the content that is already working with your audience so you you hit us straight away on um um chapter one which is about strategy versus tactics yes so, so talk talk to us a bit about having a social media strategy or, or or social media tactics. Right. So, you know, I I think strategy versus tactics is something that gets mistaken a lot within mm -hmm. social media or just maybe in general. Um, and I thought for me it was really important to identify the differences between the two, and and why strategy is really really important. I you know I I, I like to think that strategy provides like guard guardrails. And if you're just posting tactics or just doing tactics, then it's easy to go off the rails. So it just it just provides you a good path or road. Um, I, I, um, I like to liken it to playing chess. So you, you can play chess and you can move the pieces. You can know how all of the pieces move and you can you can you know, move them as it's your turn, or maybe you can even play yourself really. Um, but it's, if you're just moving the pieces, you're technically playing chess, right? But you're just playing. If you have a goal, which is to play to win, 
then it takes strategy. And by strategy, you want to be thoughtful in how you start. Um, and then you're going to see the entire board and you're going to see how your opponent moves. And then you're going to, um, you know, think, you know, react to not that just their move, but try to think like three steps ahead. Um, and, and apparently like those that are geniuses at it can see like, like, several like more than three steps ahead um and but i think that's what strategy is it's it's really taking it's having a goal in mind starting seeing how things work looking at the um current climate looking at the climate of the internet you know the internet is a very fickle place and it, it changes a lot so it's really important to see where it is at any given time and just to respond and and um rethink things and have that inform future content and decisions that's all a part of strategy and and it's it's what really helps people to you know move the needle on what what they're doing whether it's organic um, especially in organic but that helps to inform the inform the paid side as well so you came up with um the uh what you've called the six m's yes which are um uh miss mission um message message Management. management, medium, metrics, and monitoring. That's right. Yes. Um, yes. Um, let, so let's just walk through. So when you talk about a mission, is this coming back to the strategy part again? Yes. Yes. So M meaning, you know, what are your goals? Because you need to have goals and very specific goals in order to you know, move toward that goal and, and really to know what you're doing. This is kind of your why, like, why are you using social media um, channels and platforms in the first place? Like you, to use them just to be on them is actually not an ideal goal. Um, you want to have a specific goal in mind. So give us an example of a goal. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you have at, at a university, say you have. So, so what's MIT's goal? Oh, yeah. So um, some of, uh, you know, our to to reaffirm our place as um, a leader in research and education um, to to support our president's uh, messaging priorities. And sometimes those messaging priorities change. Right. Um, they sometimes they they stay the same because uh, messaging, as you know, takes time <laughs> to sure. like move the needle on. Um, but sometimes they change because you have a new president, and um, and also to like to show our culture and our our creative side, which you know people don't always realize. Um, and and so you know we we will say you know, in order to show our culture, we'll sh we'll um, create content and share content on platforms X, Y, and Z. Um, maybe you know once a week or two times a week. I mean, we're very we're very specific in the in the tactics, but we know that's our goal, and so that's something that we want to create content to support that goal. Right, excellent. Um, and so, when, when you talk about that, then you've you've already started talking about message. message. So, what yes. do you mean by message? Yeah, the stories that you're telling. I think a lot of times as social media managers, we're so worried about the specifics on one specific post and getting it out there and play, pressing send, but we forget that that one post is a part of a larger body of work. So, um, your whole timeline, your whole body of work is the the greater story that you're telling about your organiz organization or your entity. Um, you know, I do I do sort of go into this in the book, but I do have a three scrolls rule. Um, I believe that, you know, we all, this is how we look at the social media, right? We're, we're scrolling. And um, the one time that um, a user might decide to go to your profile or your, you know, your your profile page or timeline might be to, to, to decide whether they or not they want to follow you or follow your brand. And I believe that you have three scrolls to convince them if the, to follow you or not. And that's all you, that's all you get. That's how fast it goes. And so I'm always viewing our content as a user. So I want to see in, in three scrolls of content, any given three scrolls, what are you seeing? Are you, you know, are you seeing our full, the depth um, and breadth of our our culture, our um, our community. You know, is just one type of person represented, or do you see all members of our community represented? You know, our our messaging priorities, like you know, of, of AI and like climate, are they coming through? So I just, it's really important that you're, um, you know, you're telling your story, the whole story of your institution. 
It's it's great advice, Jenny, in terms of, um, you know, we do look at things from a three, three scroll perspective um, and, and whatever people put out, they need to recognize that it's about them, whether it's us as individuals or whether it's about a company. Um, what about what about management? Yeah, I think this is part of the execution of your strategy in order to be, you know, um, in order to be consistent and in order to minimize errors, you just really need um, a management system, whatever system that you implement for yourself. It has to be something that a lot of people have, um, you know, um, access to, not just you. Um, it has to be something that's repeatable. Um, there's a very distinct process where like from ideation to execution to, um, to monitor, like looking at the content after it's posted, you know, it's something that should be able you should so what, be able what to repeat. Do you, what do you use yeah so we actually use um a, a version of trello we actually use the free version of trello which is been fine for us yeah and and we you know we put all of our text and our alt text and you know we move things over as things get um as things are used or posted or if, if something needs um you know uh a, a, approval, you know, we have a, a, a system that we are all familiar with. So we know where every piece of content is at any given day. And it's it's important. It shouldn't just be in one person's head or in one person's laptop, because if that laptop goes kaput, right. then every, yeah, everything is lost. And, and, and so let's move on to the um, to fourth Medi one, the me medium. medium. Yeah. So um, I, I, I was this was the toughest one to to find an M for, but medium <laughs> medium works. Is like, I'm a big believer that you don't need to be in all of the platforms, right? Yeah. Like, um, and or you don't have to be the the first. I, I just think it has to be a good fit, and you have to find that your audience is there. Um, and I think that sometimes we focus too much on being on every platform, and we don't focus enough on the quality of our content. You know, if you're if you're just posting the same the content the same way with the same text in every single platform, then then you're you're not doing it right, right? You're not optimizing your content for every single um, platform. So, you know, I if if content is good, if you know if it's shareable, if it's so good that people want to share it, it does what I call jump platforms like you know how many times have we seen tweets in instagram or linkedin you know people literally take screenshots and post tweets in linkedin or x posts um uh, you know how many times have you seen videos in your, your your dms you know people share videos or reels in my dms you know all the time and so it's it's you know i think we should focus less on being everywhere um, and focus more on making our content shareable in because then your audience will share it in all of the other platforms for you, which is even better, right? You want you want your audience sharing it because they like it so much instead of you just kind of posting the same thing in every single channel. I agree. It's it's all of the platforms came from a bit different background, LinkedIn, Twitter. And it's just, it's really, uh, it's like someone putting their uh, nails down a blackboard. <laughs> when you see someone take something which is clearly a, a, a tweet right. um, and put it on LinkedIn. Like um, we can't tell. Of course yeah, we yeah, can yeah, tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, you, you know, you, you, you ruined it. <laughs> and if we go back to the scrolls, the scrolls, it's like, you know, you know and, it, and it is, it, it, it's irritating because it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't work. Right. It doesn't, you know, when I see, you know, um, like horizontal, you know, um, uh, videos in vertical video platforms like that, that like just, that's a big pet peeve of mine right now. But, I, I, I must admit, I've never noticed that one. I'll have to look out for that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's just me. Um, so metrics, always yeah, one. yeah. This is this is um, you know you should you should know what you're you know measuring. And this is driving from the strategy, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it helps inform the strategy. It you know and and it it helps 
it helps you learn if what you're doing is working or if it's not working. And if it's not working, you know, improve on it, pivot. You don't have to keep on doing what's not working, right? So I think you, I think it's important to know what you measure before you even start posting. You know, whether it's growth and you want to look at numbers, whether it's, um, you know, how much people like a certain type of content, you know, then that's engagements. I think it's really, really important to look at the metrics every day day or regularly. Um, and and when you do that, you'll start to find meaning in them. And what sort of metrics are you measuring? You know, I always go, my bread and butter metrics are engagement. I've always found that, um, you know, engagements are people voting on that content and they're Absolutely. saying, I really like this and want to see more. And so I, I try to look at engagements to find out what I can repeat you know, and, and, and stop doing what isn't working. And, and I've always found this one thing to be true, despite anything, despite what the algorithm is doing. I've always found that a engage more engagements can stretch your reach and impressions, um, which can lead to more followers, but the opposite is not true. You can boost a post and stretch the impressions, but it doesn't mean it's going to get any engagements. Yeah, if it doesn't resonate with the, um, uh, the audience, it doesn't resonate. They're not going to, yeah. I, I've, I've written some amazing blogs that nobody read. That can't be true. Because because it just didn't resonate. And it was one of those things where you, you uh, and it's not you that decides, it's the audience. That yeah, decides. it's that's true. That is true. Yeah. A lot of times we um, forget to ask our audience what they want to hear, hear or see from us. And the engagement is the easiest feedback loop, right? It's the quickest feedback loop. So, um, and the, the, the final one is uh, monitoring. Yes. And I'm just double checking because I wrote as you, as you I wrote wrote the wrong thing down. Though I actually have monitoring down in my Yes, head. it's monitoring, yes. Um and um yeah, it's it doesn't end, right? When when you hit post or you hit send, it that's it doesn't stop there. You want to listen, go back and see what your audience is saying about you know, your content or just saying in general or saying, um, seeing how they're feeling about, you know, the current climate or the current what, you know, what's what's happening on the Internet and if they're engaged with it or if they're not engaged with it or, you know, it helps you learn what what triggers them or what what they're looking for. And, you know, that's what provides value, right, when you can solve a problem or help a need or fill a need. Um, and you can do that by listening to your audience. So what are you doing in terms of of, of monitoring yourself? Yeah, no, I, you know, we go back and look in in within platforms to see who's having the conversations. And we're not, you know, we're more interested in uh, the members of our community and what they're saying about, um, you know, happenings on campus or, or um, you know, uh, on actions of, by our administration, like we kind of want to know what our own community is saying. But, you know, we do have we do use a tool that will help us, um, you know, in a crisis, look sort of sort of look more broadly at at the conversation on the Internet. Um, and Are you using a social media listening tool like we Brand do around 24 or something? Uh, well, we we are actually we're actually is it okay for me to say what, what we're yeah, using? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I've already um, mentioned two. So there's okay, a lot okay. Go, so we're um we actually are currently using Insights okay. through Hootsuite, Hootsuite, and it's powered by Brandwatch. So right. yeah, and it's been really it's been helpful. It's been incredibly helpful for us in those moments where you really want to know um what your what people are talking about in conjunction with your brand and another topic. Yeah, we use Brand24. Okay. Which is a similar sort of thing. Not big users of it, but um it's a it uh so um in the in the book you talk about the mysterious algorithm. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. Not that I know anything about it or that I figured You don't it have out. any inside uh, knowledge then? Um uh no, no about what they do, but my um philosophy has always been when the algorithm changes, don't be so reactive. You know, the the one thing the algorithm is meant to do is it's meant to get to know its users yeah. better. Um it does sort of lean like sometimes it might say we're preferring this or we're preferring that kind type of content, but in the end it's 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 um it's a measurement or it's in it's a mathematical um 
you know, equation to get to know its users better. And I think when we you react to what you think the algorithm is doing, then you're changing you mm-hmm. instead of letting it get to know you and so what you you're don't doing. Face the algorithm in any shape or form. I don't immediately. Right. I always kind of stay the course. Mm-hmm. And um, I've always found and 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 you know, organic is a long game, you know, so I'll even stay the course for like a full year. But if our numbers don't bounce back to where they do, and they always have, you know, um, and if they don't, then that's when we'll start to say, okay, you know, what what do we know about the al- what do what do people know about what's changed with this particular algorithm? And we'll we'll start making um, some tactic changes, maybe even strategic changes, like a year later. I definitely don't react to like within a week or two. I'm not. We're not reactive with our okay. channels. J- Jenny, thank you so much for coming on and and talking about your book um so first and foremost if anybody wants to see what good social media is like especially on twitter go and look at jenny oh thank you she she (laughs) she 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 engages with the audience she educates the audience it's lovely and if 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 anybody's interested to see what good twitter looks like jenny is a great example of that i really appreciate that um and your book um, organic social media is a fantastic book if you're looking to understand social media um uh build communities or anything like that you've poured all of your expertise from the last however many years and it is really fabulous thank you thank you so much thank you for having me on you're welcome so where where can we get a copy um just anywhere you can find books you can order it through anyone and amazon cogingpage.com it's available and where can where can we find you jenny um, I'm pretty much Jenny Lee Fowler in all of the spaces, like LinkedIn, Instagram, Threads. But I'm the I was I was not married when I got onto Twitter, so I'm still the Jenny Lee on on right. X. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you so much for coming on, and thank you for sharing your experience and talking about your lovely new book. It's... Oh, we've sold. Look, here we go. Um, oh, Kelly, yay! Kelly's thank book. you, Kelly. <laughs> Perfect. And thank you, was... Kelly. Yeah, it was delightful talking with you. Thank you. And uh, and 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 Karen says that was amazing as well. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That you're welcome. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much for coming on.